I, in this video I wanted to discuss uh, uh, one of the main features of uh, our uh, trading algorithms and basically is the idea that uh, uh, we organize every day uh, uh, 100 stocks so we have a basket of uh, 100 stocks that is basically uh, a somehow updated version of a Nasdaq 100 every few months we update the list but uh, the idea is that uh, we want to keep uh, in our portfolio uh, stocks that are relatively solid and you know they have some volatility being uh, in Nasdaq uh, uh, more volatile than SP500 for example S&P 500 but uh, they're still uh, they're not penny stocks we are strong stocks that uh, we are not going to lose a lot of values uh, in a relatively short amount of time and uh, so the, uh, the algorithms looks at the performance of these uh, stocks and with performance I mean uh, in particular actually only price because uh, we try to include other factors like volume and so on and they don't seem to uh, be, be very relevant. So it's just looking at uh, uh, the price over a uh, period of several days to few weeks and uh, uh, and then using a, a metric of uh, performance uh, we uh, organize the stocks every day uh, so this decision is made once a day uh, and also the information it's uh, it's all about daily uh, data points and uh, uh, and then the stocks are organized in terms of uh, their performance so from one to hundred with one being the best performance stocks uh, and hundred being the worst and now this sorting ca can be so we have different algos and the sorting is different from for each algo and some stocks some algos uh, emphasize um, the concept of mean returning the mean return so for example uh, a stock in position one when mean the concept of mean return uh, so basically the mean return idea is that uh, um, a stock stocks in general follow uh, a particular pattern and uh, if they deviate too much so they they got uh, two away uh, with a higher price from the mean the mean that, that means that uh, the stock is probably uh, overbought so it uh, they soon lose uh, this um, high price value and it will go back to the mean uh, or even below the mean um, of a of a general trend uh, and vice versa so if your stock uh, it's uh, uh, losing value relatively to its uh, general trend uh, it can reach a bottom eventually and then it will go up so the, the idea of mean return uh, in this case uh, will allow us to make a decision so if a stock uh, uh, it's uh, considered oversold uh, we will put it in a position number one because uh, we are thinking that it's going up uh, soon you know tomorrow today because of we make a, a trade in the, in the beginning of the day we think that the stock within a day will go up so that gives that particular stock and this is done uh, you know, one stock per day so it means the position number one is held by different stocks every day usually so once in a while uh, we hold um, the position instead of you know, buying a new stock and it happens rarely and, uh, um, and the position number 100 will be a stock that we want to short because maybe it's um, overbought um, there are other sortings that uh, uh, put this idea basically uh, upside down and, uh, and instead uh, um, they use another metric we use another way of organizing the stocks and in that case we emphasize uh, trend following so we think that uh, a stock has performed well in the recent past and it will continue to perform so uh, the position here 
you know, of the sorting depends on the sorting algorithm. And we have different algorithms that do different sorting, or sometimes they even mix the two. Um, and so they, they choose between uh, um, mean returning uh, sometime and other times they decide that they want to go with uh, uh, trend following and again they, they have uh, optimizations algorithms that uh, decide which which of the two approaches is uh, uh, good for the, the particular market conditions so um, these uh, what these graphs shows is uh, uh, one of the particular sorting. I think this is actually a mean returning sorting. And uh, um, and what the graph shows uh, on the, uh, so the x-axis we have uh, the position, so from 1 to 100, uh, determining that the particular sorting. And then on the y-axis we have uh, the daily gains uh, for that particular position. So in other words, uh, if uh, Every time the algorithm says, okay, this is uh, my choice for the day, so position number one, uh, and we always buy that particular stock, what, what is uh, over time, and this is uh, the pre period uh, analyzed here is about 269 days, a little bit uh, more than the usual 252 days, that is uh, uh, one year of trades, uh, you know, the market is closed on uh, weekends and holidays, so we have usually 252 trading days. We just went a little bit uh, beyond that for no particular reason, just to have a little bit more stats. And uh, uh, then we calculate the mean return. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, the average return for that particular pers position. And you can see uh, for for this particular algo, we have about 0 0.45. It is a pretty nice daily return. Uh, this kind of daily return will give you at least three times uh, a year uh, returns on your investment. And uh, um, so what, what this graph shows is that uh, we indeed have alpha. You know, with uh, our uh, approach uh, is statistically significant in terms of beating the market. The black line here represents uh, the... Um, the average behavior of the market. What we did in this case, instead of sorting uh, the stocks using our particular algorithm, we use uh, uh, basically random uh, sorting that is alphabetical order. So you know, there is no reason why the stocks should perform better because uh, their name starts with A versus P, for example. And so organizing them in uh, alphabetical order should give us a completely random uh, behavior and you can see uh, uh, this is what exactly you will expect there is no a trend in the black line right the, uh, some stocks behave better some stocks worse uh, this uh, peak here in the black line uh, it's due to uh, Tesla that uh, has performed very well uh, so it's you know above all the other stocks but all the other stocks, you know, some there are some losers, there are some gainers, but there is no a particular trend. You know, that you will, what you will expect um, if uh, if you're sorting at no alpha. You know, I, I didn't have any ability uh, to predict what the market uh, is going to do next. Uh, but if you have a, a technique that is able to sort these uh, stocks in a way that uh, uh, correlates with the future behavior, you will see a trend, right? And and you and this is what uh, you observe here that uh, this red line, uh, it's higher uh, in these uh, smaller positions, uh, you know, the best performing stocks. That you know this green area basically shows uh, an, a region where uh, the stocks are doing pretty well, and then uh, the red area shows you know these uh, the stocks where uh, that are not performing so well. Uh, again, these are not the same. While for the alphabetical order, the stocks is basically the same stock. Uh, um, for the um, our uh, algorithm uh, sorting, uh, these are not right. These are positions. So every uh, every day, a new stock will assume that position. Uh, but in general, that position corresponds to 
uh, worse performing uh, behavior, like you know, for position number 100 here, you see it's uh, consistently a loser. And so we can use this to short this, this position. Now, why here where is a peak is you know, probably due to the fluctuations, you know, still um, a pretty random behavior, right? There is still noise, so we, we don't have a magic uh, ball to predict exactly what the market is going to do. But statistically, we are right, right? So there are fluctuations, there are some stocks that doesn't, don't perform very well in that particular positions. Uh, but in general, this, these uh, positions here, you know, uh, the, the one that the algo uses to make his decisions uh, are winners, right? So position number one, it's a consistent winner. Uh, yeah, position number four seems to work very well. So we can also do this dynamically where uh, you know, we can use a moving window over the last month, let's say, and we can choose the position that seems to work better for some reason. Um, and so we, we, we choose different approaches, but uh, in general, it seems that we have a way uh, to predict the behavior of, uh, of the stocks in the future, uh, like near future, right? So like usually we, we care about what the stock is going to do the next day because we want to do a lot of trades. So we hold the stock just for a day then we sold it, sell it again. And, uh, uh, and so these p-values, the, dis the distribution of these gains is not Gaussian, so we cannot really use a, a simple t-test, but uh, we have done this as a, a you know, short uh, and you know, short, uh, quick calculation to, to see if there is significance. We, in the future, we'll do something more sophisticated. Uh, but you can see that uh, uh, you know, these p-values are statistically significant. They are, are below 0 0.05, that is what is considered usually statistically significant. Uh, so th these are, over this amount of uh, time, over one year, uh, you know, we consistently uh, were able to predict uh, um, a, a, a possible gain for, uh, for choosing this particular uh, sorting, right? This, this position number one to maybe 10. So this, this gives us uh, a selection of stocks that uh, are going to do well in the next few days. Uh, so this is this is very nice demo visual demonstration that uh, what we are doing actually it's uh, uh, has some uh, scientific validity. It's uh, we have a way of correlating our predictive metric to uh, the future behavior of uh, of a market. Okay. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments uh, or any comment in general and um, uh, I, will, I will make a different post in the future explaining other features of our uh, algorithm but this is one of the essential ones that uh, uh, I think it's very nice to uh, share to explain how our, our algorithms work. Thank you.